And welcome to High Footy Five, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards a singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. And this is Beer Time. Beer. Excellent. This week, actually, it's been hard to find a few stories. I, I had difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, being, being picked a few, uh, picked a few certain ones that I think would actually be pretty interesting relating to more the tech side and stuff. There's been a lot of epic, epic tech things that have been happening. And that has been twice. I've said epic twice, so you can count it and I will say it more. I promise. Yeah, I know. Everyone hates it. So I don't like it now. Mm. Uh, so my first one really is uh, I've got about this. Uh, you know, talking about the Connect, and there's this other one, another idea about how you could have it with actual virtual reality uh, computer guns. Cool computer guns. Um, we've got like the whole supercomputer battle with China now having the fastest supercomputer in the world. See, that's epic. Uh, and the one after that is uh, a computer within a computer within a computer. It just keeps on going down. <laughs> Inception style. So. Your dog. Yeah, this is pretty um, awesome. The Air Force is doing some pretty crazy research into uh, neuroscience and, you know, pretty much fucking up the brains of other... the enemy. Hells, yeah. And then uh, our singularity topic for, uh, for the week is uh, we're going to talk about technology platforms. Yes. Um, so, yeah, pretty much what platforms will be the technology of the future. Basing off this vending machine idea. <laughs> so, we'll go from there. All from a vending machine. All from a vending machine. They're influential creatures. We should center a little. That's better. You just want to get me closer oh. to you, I can tell. Indeed. It's very yes. odd. Um, <laughs> anyway. You wanna get, did you want to go first? Um, Who's yours? Yeah, sure, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk about this. This one's pretty cool. I'll put down my beer first before talking about it. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it, it's a pretty basic idea like it, it's been around a little bit before like I've seen people speak about it but it was just this video it really captured my imagination so we'll put the video up it's pretty awesome yeah. it's, a, it's a, a screen on the end of a gun and uh, you walk around and uh, as you turn the screen moves as well so it's like an actual full on 3D virtual world sweet and uh, yeah it's pretty awesome like uh, you go around you, you shoot you do all of that and uh People are saying that, oh my god, Microsoft should have done this rather than the Kinect. And I mean, that's... Yeah, that everyone's is, ragging on the silly. Kinect lately. Yeah, everyone hates it. Yeah. Well, at least on Reddit. At least the... Well, at least yeah, yeah, all, all the forums, yeah. all, the, all the big nerdy forums are yeah. all of that. <laughs> very, very much hating that. But of course, the, the main demographic is not us. The main yeah. demographic is, you know, everyone. But it's, like it's, the just, Wii. it's just Microsoft copying off the Wii. Oh, yeah, that's it. I like, mean, oh, you, you we'll, establish we'll, we'll get that. What's that demographic called? Oh, kids. Yeah. And families. <laughs> Thank you, Whitest oh. Kids. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't say. <laughs> well, this here, which I liked it, is um, the, the reason I brought this up, the reason I think it could be actually very interesting, is the divergence between, uh, say, like casual gamers and full on hectic gamers and all of that, like getting into it really like crazily. Yeah. Like, I've been playing some like hectic um, strategy sums, like uh, strategy games recently, like uh, Europa Universalis, like 3 and stuff. I thought Civilization was like, you know, kind of hectic it's with all the stuff. Name. It is, but this game was like full on like charts and everything. I was like, whoa, okay. So I'm getting into that. Right. But um, just this idea of actually separating people, gaming is diverging a bit. I mean, obviously with face, uh, Facebook mm -hmm. and like Farmville and all of that, you're very much casual gamers and very much the hardcore things. And I think we need a company to actually jump on that. So this could be a good way to do it. Why not redo like your paintball arenas and all of that? I mean, the tech of paintball arenas, like oh, I went just a little while ago. It's not, not there's not a lot there. And not use paintballs. Oh yeah, why, why not do like a full on virtual thing? Like you're a team <laughs> of people fighting against all these crazy guys and when you That's get just, hit, you, you just die. don't want to get hit by the paintballs. Well yeah, don't get me wrong, it <laughs> fucking hurts. But <laughs> still, like imagine like a team of guys, like Left 4 Dead. Imagine Left 4 Dead in real life and you have the whole paintball arena actually geared around that. So you all work together and you, yeah. you pay to go through again and imagine again. Imagine like, um, like he's just using the standard game graphics. So imagine if you actually had a, oh, a camera. Like, yeah, yeah, a camera on the front of the screen, and then it actually projected it over the top. Is that what you were thinking? I was thinking like augmented reality. Yeah, like you'd have like your, your, your typical laser tag arenas where it's just like blank wall, but mm -hmm. when you look through the screen, it's got like it's all textured and there's yes. things on there. Great. It's overlaying stuff on top. You of could it. do the same thing. There was a great app recently about like capturing butterflies on like your iPhone. Yeah, I, I, I think it's I butterfly. Like a, I, I butterfly. butterfly yeah. yeah, and uh, why not just overlay that? Say like you create the whole complex like you do an abandoned warehouse why not and you have like some <laughs> parts that you've got to follow and then you look through your screen and you see where all the monsters come from and stuff and that could be kind of cool. idea is like pokemon they should pokemon love pokemon like go, go and catch them with your phone how yeah, awesome would that be like the idea contact us we know people <laughs> who can hook you up with that <laughs> there are so <laughs> many great ideas that can go from this I, I, i'm excited that i 
because at the moment the definite swing is towards the casual gamer, but I think it's going to start swinging a little bit more towards the more uh, invested and all of that, and that I think will manifest itself in ways of yeah, like they, they're gonna dedicated. Go to, they're going to go where the money is. So oh like, yeah, definitely. The money's in family casual gaming at the moment. But I mean, the very fact that like going in like laser tag and all of that, people still go there and do that. I mean, that can be upgraded. This is getting to that point. Yeah. Right. Exciting. Sweet. But Microsoft won't buy it. Because the gun was like, oh, yeah, no, it, no, he just made it from like a really cheap gun and a, a mouse oh, yeah. tracking thing. You know? No, no, my wife's not doing it. They're going another direction. It's very silly to think that they would. Yeah. Um, okay, my money is, uh, apparently this is fairly old news, but it's only just recently surfaced. Um, pong. Early Pong. Yes, lots of Pong. Oh, Pawn. Pawn? Why are you looking at Pawn? <laughs> Sorry. You're confusing me. Okay. Um, no, no, China apparently owns the fastest supercomputer in the world now. It runs at 2.5 petaflops. 2.5 thousand trillion floating point operations per second. But even that doesn't no, explain it. It doesn't. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At yeah, 2, two trillion, yeah, whatever. 2. Um, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, it's been made by the National Supercomputing Center in Tianjin. I probably spelled that wrong. It's called the Tianhe. Dash one eight, probably spelled that wrong as well. Just pissed off a whole nation, you know. Yep, or well, one billion of them. Mm -hmm. They're smaller than me, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. He was just egging me on. Um, okay. Like <laughs> no, apparently Chinese people are actually the latest generations. Latest generations are, are taller now. I'm not digging a hole. Screw you. Anyway, um. So what they're saying, they're, they're not using it for any, like, you know, everyone's all scared because, like, China, they're building a supercomputer. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. we're all doomed. It's terrifying. We're doomed. But apparently, Revolution. like, over half of the world's supercomputers on the top 500 list are in the US. Mm. And over 90% of them at the moment all run US hardware. But um, China is expecting, they're going to start manufacturing their own chips and doing they're their own hardware. hardware. Yeah. How, Appar how apparently, even in, apparently, even in this computer, the... Um, the, I forget what it's called, but like the logic thing or something that connects all the CPUs together. Because mm -hmm. you get this big thing about supercomputers. They um, made that themselves as proprietary. Oh, that's cool. But they're not using, they're just using this for, um, apparently they're just going to rent it out to oh, anyone okay. who needs it. Fuck but yeah. what this is doing now is, I mean, China's freaking winning. <laughs> Oh, the US of moment, yeah. Yeah, the US is a competitor. Like a wild competitor appears. Yeah, and so people, what uh, people want to try and do now is turn this into kind of like a friendly battle because the yeah. US really hasn't had much of a competitor since, um, mm. I think they said since Japan back in like the 90s mm. where Japan was first and the US was like, no, and we, they just completely left them in the dust. Yeah. Um, so now DARPA is doing a big project uh, which they're it's over um, the next eight years so they expect exaflop scale yeah they're creating an exaflop computer by 2018 I can't remember that and that's an initiative of DARPA and the um like the, the MIT and stuff yeah NVIDIA um Intel mm -hmm. well MIT. that's that's cool yeah. I'd, I'd like some more competition and so I think it'd be good for yeah. I'd like uh, China to actually start doing their own um like uh, chips and all of that I mean why not more stuff going yeah. there. I mean, uh, obviously, they'll eventually... I don't eventually know why they already do it. Like, well, it would be very hard to compete. I'm guessing the tech to actually get into it, like the... The manufacturing shit. labs. Yeah, the labs. cost of entry would be very, very high. Well, what level are they down to now? Like, <sighs> below 45 nanometers. Oh, like, yeah, a lot lower than that. I, I, I don't know. I, I should... I, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't kept up with it in the past few years, but they're low. Yeah. So yeah. It's pretty crazy. Good fun. <laughs> hmm. Well, actually, speaking about computers, goes to uh, my next one which is uh, <laughs> building computers within games, really. Um, so a computer within a computer. Uh, and the reason I brought this up... Your dog. Your dog. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, the reason I think this is absolutely fantastic... Tree. Lots of charts. Um, the, re the reason this is uh, really great is that... Uh, shit. There is a reason. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> No, no, uh, well, what, what's happening? Well, you like vibrations. Yeah, no, it's, it's destroying everything. Um, Minecraft, if you haven't played Minecraft, you should definitely play Minecraft. Fantastic game. Mm. And uh, there's this other game called Little Big Planet that's on uh, PlayStation. That's another really great one. Minecraft. Wake up in the desert, punch trees. Damn straight. Um, on both <laughs> of these games, people have built Turing Complete Computers. So, essentially, if you wanted to, you could scale it up and actually have it simulate the universe. It could make its own game. You could have Little Big Planet running within Little Big Planet, if you wanted yeah. to. And uh, 
that I think is really, really crazy at the moment. Like we're actually seeing computers within computers. And I mean, this is just really one of the first steps. I think we're actually gonna see, this was meant to lead on to like the singularity talk about technology platforms and all of that. Why not just have uh, like that as the platform and then just keep on going from there and from there and from there. Same way as like say the singularity, you start developing like, you know, Hive AI, global AI, everyone thinking the same things. And you create a computer within that just to solve like simple little tasks going going through. And this, I don't know, this has just really captured my imagination that you have computers within a computer and then theoretically that computer could then make another computer within it and then so on and so on and so on and so on. Yeah. I mean, the actual places you could go with this is kind of ridiculous. I don't know. I like it. Isn't that just like the, the whole platform methodology that technology kind of operates on? Yeah. Yeah. Well, true. Yeah. Anything, it, technology, you know, it, you know it's a good thing if it actually allows you to build a, something that can simulate its whole thing again. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just awesome. Uh, yeah. Checking out all of this, it's, it's, it's very interesting. I'll talk about it more when we get into the singularity topic, but this is, I, I, I like it, I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, the Air Force uh, basically wants to, <laughs> quote, degrade enemy performance by attacking the brain's chemical pathways. Mm. Basically, like, make their enemies stupid. By like, I don't know, like firing some kind of chemical that just you know destroys their brain, or some kind of you know just maybe get them all high. just like put them all <laughs> directly through that could work. LSD darts. Oh yeah, well that's what we tried it before. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> um. So this is pretty crazy. Um, it's kind of just an experimental thing. Like it's basically guys. Um, they call it, yeah military bureaucrats, especially scientists, saying, "Hey, why don't we try and do this? Why don't we try and do this? Why don't we try to do this?" Because there's so much money in the, in oh, the military okay. to throw around. Like, apparently this is already part of a six-year, $49 million effort to deploy extreme neuroscience and biotechnology in the service of warfare. <laughs> exactly what they were created for. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least the military pushes some of the cool technology, you know, not for the yeah. not for the best of humanitarian sort of, you know, yeah. of, you know goals or whatever. It's like one research suggests, uh, one suggested research thrust is to use uh, external stimulant technology to enable the airmen to maintain focus on aerospace tasks and to receive and process greater amounts of operationally relevant information. So basically, you know, hack enhance their intelligence. Enhance their intelligence, like, you know, um, mod it, upgrade it. Um, then the other one's like, you know, fusing multiple human sensing modalities to create uh, the, the capability for special operations forces to rapidly identify human-born threats. Hive minds. Yeah. Awesome. Pretty much. So if one guy over there senses like some kind of, you know, danger, then it notifies all the rest. Like yeah, a yeah. canary in a cage type thing. Um, <laughs> Cool. Yeah, and then basically that, that was the original plan, but then they're just like, well, if we're actually if we can use chemical pathways to enhance our soldiers, then we could do the opposite with the enemy and actually use chemical pathways and whatever you can possibly think of to actually make them disrupt them cognitively retarded. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That yeah. is really fantastic. Like this is, I mean, science fiction has been all over this like crazy, and this is actually a, a full on yeah. thing that Dalp is saying they're actually going to focus on. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. It's not DARPA. Well, I, uh, there's no reference to DARPA. It's the US Army. It's the, oh, okay. It's the Air Force. It's the Air Force oh. Research Laboratory's 7-11th uh, Human Performance Wing. Fuck. Okay, cool. So it's the Air Force. It's, it's, they're probably associated with DARPA somehow. But they're, well, they're still doing, like, I mean, 49 million, like, I think that's that's not too much, but it's still a fair chunk. I mean, that's... Oh, I'll take it six years. Yeah. Man, that's still, that's kind of awesome, really. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. And crazy, like you always see all the military um, technology, you know, they keep it really secret, they use it for a while, and then people finally he hear about it, and then yeah, you're like, whoa. Then it goes to the consumer market, and people just use it. Yeah, this could be actually the, the beginning of all of that stuff the yeah. Hive Mind Intelligence Special Forces. I mean, why not? You should be really doing it that way. Yeah. Hmm. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little terrifying.